Another golden hour in Tokyo as Lisa Carrington makes history. David Nika claims New Zealand's first boxing medal in almost three decades. And nerve-wracking scenes as Tom Walsh narrowly avoids Shock Games exit. Welcome to Focus Sport, this is the Olympics News Wrap. Kia ora, I'm Shuri Kinnear and what a day for our Kiwi team. Four medals in just four hours yesterday. Lisa Carrington claiming two herself and she's not done yet. So let's take a look at how it all unfolded. On another historic day for New Zealand on Sea Forest Waterway, Lisa Carrington thrust herself to Olympic glory not once but twice in the span of just a couple hours. She started the day with a typically commanding victory in the K1 200, winning her third consecutive Olympic gold in the event. A little over an hour later, she hit the water again with teammate Caitlin Regal in the K2 500, winning another gold after dominating the field, becoming well and truly the country's most successful female Olympian. Heavyweight boxer David Nika finished his Tokyo campaign with a bronze, New Zealand's first boxing medal in 29 years. The double Commonwealth Games champion was beaten on points by split decision by the world champion Russian in their semi-final. Earning my way to a medal was was a, a massive part of my, you know, of uh, that Olympic dream. So um, at the moment, it's it's a little bit, um, you know, I. I know I can be proud of myself, but at the same time, you know, I just wanted that little bit more. I'm a little bit greedy like that. Peter Burling and Blair Chuk were unable to defend their Olympic title after being pipped for gold in the 49er final to finish with a silver. Great Britain edged Germany on the line to win the race. Now, it wasn't the result the Kiwis would have wanted, but AUT's sailing professor Mark Gorham's told us the duo should feel very proud. Pete and Blair, I think, can really hold their head high. They are now New Zealand's most successful Olympic sailing duo um, or crew ever with a gold and two silvers and three successive Olympic Games. And of course, we need to remember that the last couple of years, they've been very much focused on the America's Cup and they've only really turned their attention back to the Olympics in around April this year. So to come away with very nearly repeating their gold from Rio five years ago on such a short build up uh, and to, to end up with a silver is something that they can really, I think, hold their head highs and, and feel very proud of. Meanwhile, Josh Jr. finished 10th in the Finn medal race to finish 5th overall. And Tom Walsh will compete for another Olympic shot put medal, but only just after a rather bizarre night in Tokyo. He looked headed for a shock exit at the qualification phase after fouling his third and final attempt at 21.49 metres. But it was deemed legal after he challenged the official's decision. And Jack O'Gill will join Walsh in the final after qualifying from Group B. And earlier, Julia Radcliffe managed a respectable ninth in the women's hammer throw. The men's pursuit team will ride for bronze today after narrowly missing the chance to duel for gold. The Kiwis were defeated by Italy in Heat 3 last night after being overhauled in the final lap. Meanwhile, the women's team pursuit placed eighth. Diver Anton Down Jenkins finished eighth in the men's three metre springboard final, rounding off a hugely impressive Olympics debut. The 21 year old, who only scraped into the semis as the 16th qualifier, finished with a score of 415.60 overall. Double Olympic medalist Nick Willis booked his spot in the 1500 metres semi final after qualifying second fastest. He'll line up again tomorrow, but the games are over for 20 year old Sam Tanner, who finished ninth to miss out on the semis. In international news, there was drama on the water for Slovenia in the K2 500 semi-finals as they capsized just metres from the finish line. Both kayakers thankfully were quickly above the water and pulled to safety by marshals. The Great Britain's team pursuit squad experienced great joy and great shock within the span of just a few seconds. After crossing the line in a new world record time, one rider clipped the back of the other, other's wheel, sending them both to the floor of the velodrome. And later in the night, the Danes were back on track for a world record themselves before their leader rider caught up to Great Britain and caused another nasty crash. Simone Biles returned to the competitive arena to win her seventh Olympic medal. The 24-year-old fought off a spatial awareness issue known as the twisties to take bronze on the woman's beam behind two opponents from China.
New Zealand are just outside the top 10 on the medals table after yesterday's haul. China and the US still sitting there at the top. And if we take a look at today's schedule, Lisa Carrington is back on the water for the K1 500. Paul Snow Hansen and Dan Wilcox sail their medal race just after 5.30. The men's pursuit race for bronze later tonight and David Leite makes his games debut at 10.50. Well, when Leti steps up tonight in the weightlifting, he'll have his eyes firmly set on gold. But unlike for most athletes, the Olympics was never really a dream for the 25-year-old growing up until more recently, as he revealed to us earlier. It was my dream ever since I started doing things to get to Olympics. Um, but as a kid, I grew up in Thailand, so I didn't know any of these you know, to me and um, there were any of these um, opportunities to be who I am today. And so I'd say the last uh, seven, eight years has been my dream. So to finally get it, it's uh, I grew up, I was born here in New Zealand. I grew up in Tonga. Yeah, my family is a big farming family. So when I used to go to school, I used to always think like, man, I'll, I'll just study and end up being a farmer, you know? Until I came to New Zealand, then I realized there was a lot of other opportunities. There is a big, uh, big step, but um, with weightlifting, anything can happen on the day. So I might middle, I might not middle. So it's really nice. We'll just have to wait and see. You can watch the full video and read the feature story as part of our 12 to Watch series on the New Zealand Herald website with premium access. And while you're there, the New Zealand Herald has you covered for all the action. Stay up to date with our real-time Kiwi Games tracker and interactive schedule. Plus, you can catch live commentary of key events on News Talk ZB with expert analysis on the DRS, Sports Talk and our daily Olympic podcast, Tokyo in 20. Well, lots more to come as we head into the final few days of the Tokyo Olympics. Enjoy all of the action and I'll be back to wrap all the news and more tomorrow. I'm Sheree Kinnear for Focus Sport.